All right. Hey, we're going to look at polar coordinates. Just a little background information on polar coordinates. Um, perhaps you remember doing it uh, maybe in the previous year. We did cover this a bit. Using polar coordinates can simplify complicated rectangular equations. Um, and we we're, will work on converting between rectangular and polar um, coordinates. So the language of polar graphs. Here we go. A polar coordinate system is a system to plot points on a plane with a point zero in the center of the circular grid. So we pick up the origin in the center um, of our polar region. A polar coordinate system will also have that, that location, zero here, is known as the pole. So that is located as the pole. The polar axis is the horizontal ray that stretches to the right from the origin. So this would be our polar axis. And what else we got? Polar coordinates of each point. They come in an ordered pair, r theta, r being the radius and theta, uh, theta being the angle measure. R is known as the directed distance. You can kind of think of it as the amount that radiates out from the origin. And uh, theta is the directed angle. Of course, it works in the counterclockwise direction. So if I come up here, it looks like I've got a 30 degree or a pi over 6 um, angle measure. And so that's just pretty normal, isn't it? We're used to that. Um, theta is our independent variable, so it kind of correlates like x. Let's just practice plotting some points. Remember, this comes in our theta style. So I've got a directed length of 2, and it's positive. And then I've got pi over 4. So you know normally how we usually plot x, y, we'll go over x and up y. On this one, I find it easier to go up the angle first and then step outward or radiate out so many units. So I'll do, I'll find my um, pi over 4 angle measure. So I'm going up pi over 4, which stretches me along this, dis, uh, this directed angle. And then I want two units away from the origin. So this is 0 to us. I'm going to call this 1, 2, 3, just seeing the scale there. So I'm going to step out two units. That's going to direct me out to this, this location right there. So I went up by pi over 4, out two units. And that would be point P sitting out here. Q. Oh, I wonder what we do with a negative r. That's interesting. Pi over 3, I, I can handle pi over 3. So let's go up to our pi over 3 directed angle. And then I want to go not to the right, which would be positive 1, but actually I bounce backwards as a negative 1. And so I'm following the directed line segment. Let me just highlight the directed angle here. So my directed angle brought me onto, oh, that was really straight, onto the pi over 3. And if they had said positive one unit, I would have been there. But instead, they said it's negative. So instead of going outward to the right, which would be positive, I need to go opposite direction and place my point out here at Q. Okay, so negative rate, uh, R's bounce you across on that directed angle. Plot the points with the given polar coordinates. Well, we have a negative 30 degrees, so let's find negative 30. That would be negative 30 right along here, right? And then we want three units, so we came down. And so I want to stay on this side would be my positive side. And I want three units. So one, two, three. I will be out here and that would be R. 
If it had said negative, well, here was my directed angle. Negative would have been flip side back over there. But we had positive. Next, um, negative 2. So that'll be opposite. And negative 7 pi over 7. No, 7 pi over 6. There's 6, 6. 7 pi over 6, negative. So I am uh, walking along this line here. Since my directed angle brings me up over here, a positive 2 units would have been out here, but instead we are a negative 2 units, so it's going to bounce me from this side across to this side, and that's going to give me S. Example 2, plot the point 2 and then 2 pi over 3. Find three additional polar representations of this point in um, this rotation. So from negative 2 pi to 2 pi. All right, let's just plot the point. Why don't you try it on your own, see if you get it right. 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 places me on that directed angle. It would be up here, would be the positive. And now I want two units. I want to radiate out two units. So that means I'm going to stay up on this, on this upper side where my directed angle positioned me. And this would be my point 2, 2 pi over 3. Now, they want us to represent this a couple other ways. There are some general formulas. I can take and just add a full rotation, right, to my theta, or as many rotations as I want where n is some integer. So I could take 2 plus 2 pi over 3. Whoops, why, why are the plus signs, Cindy? Um, and I can add, maybe I just want to add a whole rotation to it. And that would give me 2, and this would be 2 pi, which would be, 6 pi over 3, so I'd have 2 plus 6 pi over 3. So that would give me an ordered pair of 2, comma, 8 pi over, over 3. Does that land me at the same spot? Well, let's map it out. Um, 8 pi over 3. Starting around, there's 6 pi over 3. Oh, maybe I'm not going to end up the same. And then I, oh yeah, I will. 1 pi and 2 pi will get me there. So uh, 6 thirds, 7 thirds, 8 thirds. And then I radiate out 2 units. Okay, that'll, that'll be fine. This works. And all I did was add a ro full rotation. Um, if I wanted to, if I if they were instructing me to do the opposite, I could do negative 2 for my r, but now I've got to come up with a different angle. And this little formula says take 2n plus 1 pi. Well, what does this ensure? Well, this is going to make me have an odd number of pi, right? So instead of even number of pi, which would take me full circle, odd number of pi, I could either go halfway around, or I could go around, that's even, and then one more pi would drop me on this opposite side. But with the negative r, my directed angle has me on the opposite side. Now I bounce back over, and there I am at my original point. So that formula seems to work as well. Um, you might even say, well, I'm trying to get, get to this this point, what if I just came around from that direction? What would that happen to be? Well, one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds. So I could have negative two, negative four pi over three as a another polar point, and and it would plot out to that same original. Okay. There are some conversion formulas, and those conversion formulas are really pretty easy. They're all tied back to trigonometry. X equals R cosine, Y equals R sine, 
and then r squared equals x squared plus y squared, and then tangent defined as y over x. Where is all that stemming from? Well, so these are what I think of as conversion formulas that will help us convert between rectangular and polar. Conversion formulas. and they will convert us between polar and rectangular. Now, where are these things coming from? Well, do you recall doing this in um, pre-calc especially? And you know what, we've done it some when we worked with integral trig in integration, where we worked with our triangles. So if I had some angle theta, I would have a distance of y as my vertical movement, x as my horizontal movement, and then we always labeled the um, hypotenuse to be r. So now if I wanted to define cosine, I'm trying to find a place to write, cosine of theta is opposite, or no it isn't, adjacent over hypotenuse. I can multiply by r on both sides and get r cosine theta equals x. Oh, right there's that one, right? And likewise, I could define sine of theta. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so I'd have y over r. Oh, so I can multiply up by r, and voila, there's that formula. We can see Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And tangent, of course, I'm getting a lot of lines on my little triangle over there. Um, tangent, tangent is opposite over adjacent, and that's what you're seeing there. So, you know, no, no big secret there, what, we're, what we got going. So example three, find the rectangular coordinates of the point with the given coordinates. Polar coordinates use these conversions. So, think about what a polar coordinate is. Polar coordinate comes in the ordered pair r and theta. Oh, so you mean to tell me that in my case here, r is 3 and theta is 5 pi over 6. I want x comma y because I want to get to rectangular. Well, the conversion for rectangular would be r cosine theta comma r sine theta, right? If you look back up on our conversions, find y by doing r sine, find x by doing r cosine. And then they give you all the pieces that you need here. So I'm going to have 3, because that's my r, cosine of 5 pi over 6 comma 3, sine of 5 pi over 6. Now, unit circle time. Cosine 5 pi over 6. You know, if it helps you get a little a visual on it, There, there's our triangle. This would be long distance. Oh, that's the root 3 over 2, but it's negative because it's an x value. This is a short distance up. Okay, so that's a half, and it's positive because it's going vertically. So my cosine is adjacent, which would be negative square root 3 over 2. And this one would be 3 times the vertical is 1 half. And all I'm doing is, what, maybe you weren't following me there, but what I was doing was thinking about how does that ordered pair come out on my unit circle. Cosine, sine, my cosine value of 5 pi over 6 is negative 3 over 2. My sine value is 1 half. Gives us an ordered pair. Um, an ugly ordered pair, but a rectangular arrangement nonetheless. So if I plotted these points out, it would match up with plotting that on my um, polar grid. So if I superimposed a rectangular over my polar, they would be in the same location. Um, for this next one, because they're working in degrees, which are, you know our AP would never do, 
um, this is really kind of driven off of a pre-calc um, textbook, what I'm running you through right now. So that's why you're seeing degrees on this. We would have our R and our theta as well. And then if I wanted to get to an XY, I'm going to do 2 cosine of negative 200 degrees. Pretend that's a nice negative out front there. Different color. That'll help show it. And then comma R sine 200, uh, negative 200. And then I would want to use calculator on this. And I'm going to get an approximation here because obviously 200 degrees is not one of our unit circle values. Um, this will come out to be negative 1.879, and this will be 0 0.684, throwing it in the calculator. So what does this tell me? Well, this tells me this is a quadrant, two rectangular point. What if I thought about um, polar? Polar location, negative 200. Uh, negative 200 is going to swing me up. Oh, good. Kind of in quadrant two. And then positive two units out would be somewhere out in there. Alrighty. Looks like they would land at the same spot. Converting rectangular to polar. So going the other the other way, find two polar coordinate pairs with the points given rectangular. For this, we're going to use our other two low um, conversions, okay? So I'm giving x, y, and I want to convert this to our thetas, right? Well, r is pretty easy. If I know x and y, I know that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Oh, R is going to be easy. R is equal to the square root of 1 squared plus negative 1 squared, which would make 1 plus 1 is 2. It's square root of 2. For theta, theta is a little bit trickier, but I do know the relationship. Um, okay, so let's keep theta there. I know that the tangent of theta utilizes both the x and the y values. Uh, yeah, that's, that's fine. Tangent theta utilizes x and y. Perfect, because I have an x, y, don't I? Now, that gives me tan theta equals 1 over negative 1. How do I get theta? Well, i got to do an inverse function. Theta is going to be tan inverse of negative 1. And we should all know that value. Negative 1. They are the same on the pi's over 4's, aren't they? Negative is going to happen either in quadrant 2 or quadrant 4. And that means, so I've got, oh man, i got some possibilities. I guess possibilities are good, huh? There's a few that I named out. Now, which one should I use? That's the big hairy question. Well, if I think about where would this be located? Um, positive 1, let's set up a scale of 1, 2, and so forth. Positive 1, negative 1. There's 1, there's negative 1. 1, negative 1. There's my point P. 1, negative 1. I want to be down in quadrant 4. I want to be down in quadrant 4, even in the polar region. So what would get me there? Um, I could, ooh, would this do it? I could come down by negative pi over 4 and then radiate out by the square root of 2, which would land me about there. There would be point P in polar. Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm just saying, I think this is pretty, pretty fantastic. Oh, I must have this locked. But just think, if I took this, I'm tapping on the board. If I took, took this picture and put it over here, wouldn't these points be about the same location? I like it. Oh, did I not finish? I think I better finish. So let's uh, put this, to join this information together. Negative pi over 4, comma, um, what was it, square root 2. Dang it, I did it backwards. R and then theta. 
there's our point P in polar. If they said you have to have a positive angle measure, okay, then maybe I, well, maybe I would actually choose this one because it would get me right down in quadrant four more directly, and then I could use square root two. But, you know, you can manipulate, because if I use this one, then I just have to bounce across, and so that would give me a negative root two coordinating with that. Um, two zero, well, two zero um, in rectangular is going to be, oops, I said we were counting these as double units, weren't we? Would be right there. There would be my Q. Two, zero. That's going to be two, zero in polar as well. And honestly, I don't need to uh, really do anything on that, do I? It's going to look the same. However, this is R and theta. Zero degree angle, correct? Hey, would it be true? Two and two pi? Would that work? Yes, it would. Oh, just to play around with you a little bit. What if I did negative pi? Okay, negative pi shoots me over here, but then I got to bounce across. Oh, so I need negative two. What if I said positive pi? No, I'm just getting stupid, aren't I? If I use positive pi, that bounces me over, directed angles over here. Got to bounce across, negative two. So I've listed uh, through four very easy answers. Oh, hey, I don't think I mentioned this. Have you noticed? Um, Rectangular, one way to describe point Q here. Polar, infinite ways to express the same point. Ain't that kind of cool? All right, um, working with equations. What are we at? 21 minutes. Let's get this done so I can go home. Equations, converting between polar to rectangular form. Convert each equation to the polar and rectangular form. Support your answers with the graphing utility. Okay, so R equals 4. R equals 4. I want to get it to rectangular. So this is polar equation format. I want to take it to rectangular format. Meaning I want to have x's and y's, right? Um, we want to have x's and y's. Well, I do have some conversion tools. If I only had r squared, man, that'd be cool because then r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Well, let's make it into r squared. How, you say? Well, square both sides. Then I get r squared equals 16. Did I miss, uh, break any math rules? No, because I can square each side. Now we're going to use a substitution. And instead of r squared, we know by Pythagorean theorem that r squared is equal to x squared plus, plus y squared equals 16. Hey, I recognize this formula. Do you? This is a circle. So does that mean this is a circle? Yes, it does. What we're getting on this is that the radius is always set at 4. The directed length is always 4. But the angle can be anything it wants to be because it's not, it's not restricted. It's not even mentioned, is it? So if that's the case, then I'm going to get all these points that are 4 units away from the origin and I would get a densely packed set of points and there it is r equals 4 is a circle equation that correlates with x squared plus y squared equals 16. One in the same. Try another. You liked it didn't you? Try another. r equals 2 cos secant x or theta. Okay, I don't see any cosecants in my conversion rules up there. So I think I'd rather convert. Let's use some trig work. R equals 2 times 1 over, what is it, sine theta. Cosecants the same as 1 over sine. And, oh, watch this magic. 
let's take r equals 2 times 1 over sine theta and multiply by sine theta both sides. And what does that give us? It gives us an equation that says 2 is equal to r sine, but r sine is y. There's my rectangular equation. And this was our polar equation. I recognize this as a horizontal line. And this is also a horizontal line. So some of these, you know, if we worked in polar enough, we'd probably recognize these right off the bat. This one's pretty easy to recognize. This one would be a little bit more difficult um, because I don't work in polar all that much either. All right, and then we have, um, let's skip to this number six. And we got convert. X minus three squared plus Y minus two squared equals 13 to polar form. All righty. Well, I recognize this as a circle equation, and it has um, a center at 3, 2, doesn't it? So I think what we want to do is let's expand this. Because if I could work with like x squared and y squared, that's equal to r squared, that could weave in the r for us. So let's expand. Some of these can be really tricky, you guys, to figure out what to do. And some of it's just a little bit of practice to get some intuition built, some gut choices, I guess. So what I did is I expanded both of those, and this will equal 13. And now what might I want to do? Um, well, we talked about pulling our x squared and our y squared together. And then I'd have minus 6x, a minus 4. Oops, that was really a y, wasn't it? Minus 4y. And then I've got this plus 4. Should we just ditch the 4 over to the other side or not? It might be better off. Let's just write it out and see what we want to do. Because right now, do I want to bring the 13 over to the left or the 4 over to the right? Well, let's just avoid making a, a choice. <laughs> All right, so x squared plus y squared. This we can convert to r squared. Negative 6x, I have a conversion tool for that. x is the same thing as r cosine. Okay, so far so good. y, I can convert that. That is a 4r sine theta. And then I've got my plus 4 and my uh, equals 13. Now what? Oh, hey. Problem I have is I lost this 9, didn't I? And nine and four make thirteen. Ooh, this is this is good stuff. I just noticed I lost that nine. Let's um, subtract thirteen, guys, and that's going to get us r squared minus six r cosine theta minus four r sine theta equals zero, and we are getting really close. Do you notice they have an r in common? And if I'm trying to get to polar, I would love to have r equals something. So we're going to factor out an r, and that's going to give me r minus 6 cosine theta minus 4 sine theta equals 0. And then I could divide by... Oops, let's get a parenthesis. We could divide by that stuff. Or, okay, this set equal to zero. So we've got choices here. To solve this equation, one solution 
one solution is r equals zero or this solution is r minus six cosine theta minus four sine theta equals zero and then let's add add over r equals six cosine theta plus four sine theta rectangular because we've got it down so that we have r equals and it'll be some function in terms of theta right because theta is our independent variable i like it that's the one we're after right there um this one we're just going to ditch because that's just really a point r equals zero that's the that's the pole that's that's zero okay um the last one to see if we have this point finding distance between um using polar coordinates radar detects two airplanes at the same altitude their color polar coordinates are this and 20 so if we just mapped those out 115 degrees seven miles out okay there's there's one plane and six miles 20 degrees so up 20 out six there's my other plane and they want to know the distance between them so i have this to this Probably shouldn't quite be a right angle, but it kind of looks like it is. And we want to know the green line, how far apart they are. So if I were to get the angle that resides between them, and I know, because really this is a vector, isn't it? Um, seven miles would be your magnitude and we've got a directed segment and this one is six miles so I've got a magnitude on that vector it's directed out this way um, so really this becomes kind of a resultant as well so we want to know the distance between them this could be law of, law of cosines where we're given two sides and I just need to know that angle between them so the angle that's sitting there for theta I came around by 115 degrees and then we had this 20 degree angle so the angle that resides between these two would be 115 minus 20 would give me 95 degrees between them and then I could figure out this distance r here so law of cosines a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus um 2bc cosine of my angle that sits between a, a b and c well what does that give me well i'm trying to find this is like my a down here you guys and this would be like little a up here so little a squared or r squared equals seven squared plus six squared um two times seven times six times cosine 95 degrees um a squared oh throw it all in the calculator and I get A equals the square root, and that's going to come out to be 9.608 miles. Law of cosines. It's probably been a while since you've done that. Um, we'll skip the exit ticket. So not this assignment. i got to update this, you guys, because I gave you a worksheet, and I don't think I've placed the worksheet in here yet. So do the worksheet. Have a great day. Hope you know all you want to know about coordinates and converting between rectangular and polar and equations. Over and out.